Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 is by far the most mixed Evangelion movie. With 1.0 well, not having overwhelmingly positive or negative response, since it's mainly just a remake. Evangelion 2.0 being more positive, with it having a lot of fan service and being more slice of lifey. And Evangelion 3.0 having negative reviews for being, well, <laughs> really confusing. But Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 is kind of more mixed, with many major people in the community saying it's really dumb and seems rushed, and many people saying the opposite and saying some even going to the extent of saying it's the best ending that Evangelion's ever had. I know there are many videos already explaining the meaning behind the rebuilds from channels such as Blen Blenova, um, uh, I think I pronounced that right. Um, I recommend you watch these videos. I also uh, recommend you watch uh, the one that the Curse of Evangelion. That that video is pretty good. It'll help you understand this video better. So just watch those two. Anyways. Alright, so before I can explain 3.0 plus 1.0, let me quickly explain the rebuilds and what they mean. And if you already know what I'm going to say, then skip to the timestamp on the screen. Though I do suggest you watch this anyway, uh, just to have a better understanding. Anyway, so 1.0, well, it's just a recap. And 2.0, we have Shinji finding comfort and happiness while being around Rei. And it's to such an extent that he causes near third impact just to get Ray back. We know that Ray is meant to be a sort of escape from reality for Shinji, since when he saves Ray, she's carrying his estat, which is also meant to be a form of escapism in both the movies and the show. And Evangelion 3.0, because Shinji causes near third impact, he's rewarded with Ray, but a sort of soulless, motionless, doll-like version of Rei. Also in this movie, the idea of the Curse of the Ava is introduced, which is where the pilot, though can't physically grow up, they can mentally, as we can see with Asuka and Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0. Now, the theory is for the rebuild is that Shinji is meant to be a stand-in for the audience of Evangelion, Specifically the audience that found such a relatability with the characters that they found comfort in the show and never grew up, even though they did physically grow up. They used the show as an escape from adulthood and responsibilities, making them mentally still a teenager. Now, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 still ties in with this theory. At least, I think so. Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 mainly consists of three parts, the first being a very Ray-centric village life part, the second being mainly action-orientated, and the third being where everyone's problems are solved. The first part is pretty straightforward, the only noticeable scene is when Ray gives Shinji's estat back for the first time. He seems to reject it, but then, after a while, he takes the S-Stat back. And the only reason Shinji really rejects his S-Stat is because he's still suffering from his PTSD that he got from seeing Kawaru's head literally explode in front of him. And when Shinji takes the S-Stat back, Ayanami, or uh, the clone, or Reiku, or you know what I mean, that dies. After this, Shinji surprisingly doesn't run away. He instead goes to Asuka and says he should go back to the Wonder because I think it isn't only the fishing with Kensuke that he experienced in the village, which helped Shinji grow up, but also Shinji realizing that he has to go to the Wonder and stop grieving over the past. So Shinji gets tased in the face by Asuka and is now on the Wonder once again. And when he arrives on the Wonder, Shinji is located uh, away in a containment cell. Then a bunch of exposition happens, and now Asuka and Mari enter Shinji's room. Where Asuka says, Asuka 
アスカが3号機に乗っていた時僕が何も決めなかったから助けることも殺すことも自分の責任負いたくなかったからちっとは成長したってわけね This conversation that Shinji just had with Asuka is a very important part in this movie. Since it's meant to show how Shinji is growing up, how he's learning and admitting his past mistakes. Now, we all know this is the final Evangelion movie, but I don't think the story is about Anno growing up and moving on from the show, but rather his audience. Specifically, those who use this show as a sort of Fake comfort, fake happiness. But I'll expand more on that later. So, anyways, after this, Mari and Asuka try and stop Unit 13 from commencing human instrumentality. They fail, and then after that, we get more action and more until Asuka dies. And then Gendo is revealed to basically be God and gets aboard the Wonder. Then Shinji shows up and confronts Gendo. So he pilots Unit 01 and goes to fight Gendo. After Unit 13 and Unit 01 fight in the anti universe, or whatever it's called, ultimately Gendo says, We aren't going to get anywhere fighting one on one. So then they just start talking. <laughs> and when Shinji approaches Gendo to give him his S stat back, Gendo talks about how growing up, he was alone. Nobody really understood who he was, and that he used the S stat to help him escape the sounds of other people until he met Yui. Once he found Yui, who loved him unconditionally, it made him feel happiness, comfort. That is, until he lost Yui. And once Yui was gone, Gendo immediately had to come up with a plan to have Yui back. Showing the audience how Gendo never found happiness within himself, he just used the Yui to find that sort of sense and feel of that happiness. But it wasn't actual happiness. This is meant to parallel Shinji, with him finding happiness being around Rei in 2.0, and then after losing her, he goes after what he thinks is Rei, despite everyone telling him not to, only to get rewarded with an empty shell of Rei. After this, he meets Kwaru, who he also finds some sort of comfort in, until he. well,、uh, dies. And now Shinji, in 3.0 plus 1.0, with nobody there to love him unconditionally for no reason, throughout the course of the movie, he learns to take responsibility for his actions. And eventually, at the end, he finds happiness in the real world. Whereas Gendo, through this story, being almost parallel to Shinji's, but instead of Rei, it's Yui in Gendo's case. Gendo's story is sort of the bad ending of Shinji's, with Gendo never growing up and remaining attached. To the idea of finding false happiness with Yui. Rather than growing up and finding happiness in the real world like Shinji. I know this is kind of outlandish, but I think this is meant to be the two sides of the Evangelion fanbase. With Shinji being the one that could have kept on being obsessed with the original show and kept on using it as his way to feel happy and comfort about who he is. But eventually took the original show's message to heart and went outside and grew up. Whereas Gendo is the side of the fanbase which continues to use Evangelion as a form of false comfort and happiness. And Anno's goal with this movie was to tell that side of the fanbase that it's about time that we give you closure. It's about time that you move on from Evangelion. That you grow up and find real happiness in the real world instead of using an imaginary world to find happiness. And this is where the Evangelion imaginary ties in. The Evangelion imaginary is probably the biggest reason, I think. That this movie isn't about Anno growing up, but the audience moving on from Evangelion. With the Evangelion Imaginary being the show. The reason I think the Evangelion Imaginary is the original show is because it's meant 
to be where Gendo finds his happiness. And as I said before, Gendo is meant to be the side of the fan base that continues to use the show, or Yui, to find a false sense of happiness. So, he obviously would want that comfort back. So Evangelion Imaginary will give him that comfort back, with the Evangelion Imaginary being an imaginary world where the show, Neon Genesis Evangelion, exists. That's why there's this glass-breaking imagery that happens. It's meant to be the barrier of reality and fiction breaking, with Gendo wanting fiction to come to his reality, since fiction provides him comfort, since an imaginary world provides him comfort and happiness. And that's why I think Evangelion Imaginary is meant to be the show, since it provided so many people, even including me, with, to an extent, some comfort and happiness. And for some people, they wanted that show to be their reality, since that's the only place, or one of the few places, that they find comfort and happiness with themselves. So they want that to be in the real world. And that's why the Ray Lilith thing has that horrible CG face. Since it's meant to be the cartoon Ray Lilith head, but with its CG face, it's meant to be from both worlds, both the end of Evangelion and the real world. Now, again, this is just a theory. I'm just... The, it's just speculation. If you have any thoughts or flaws in it, just leave it in the comment section. Now, to the ending. As Shinji is ejected from Unit 01 after solving everybody's problems, and Unit 01 and Unit 13 are stabbing each other with a spear of Gaius or Gaius or... You know what I mean. The thing that Shinji holds in his hand like it's some video game item. That is when Shinji says that he finally gets it. All Gendo wants now is to say goodbye to Yui, and that's the god slaying he was talking about. And, and now I think this is meant to be Anno realizing that what the fan base needs is a goodbye to Evangelion, and that's why the rebuilds exist. It's not meant to be a reboot of Evangelion. It's not meant to be another ending. It's meant to be closure for the fans so that they can move on from Evangelion and that's what I think Anno wanted with this movie I'm not saying that it was conveyed properly or that this movie is a 10 out of 10 but it served its purpose with everyone tweeting thank you Evangelion or thank you Anno and saying that everywhere across every platform I think that it accomplished its goal. And I think that's the purpose of Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 and the rebuilds as a whole. So these were my theories on the rebuilds and my explanation of it. Uh, it could be completely different, but this is what I was able to understand from what Anno wanted. I, I don't know if this is actually what he meant with this movie, but I'm just using the theories and ideas that other channels have come up with about the rebuilds and applying it to this movie. And this is my, I think, at least for Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, this is what my interpretation of this movie is. You can completely disagree or agree with it. Just, just tell me your thoughts in the comment section. And if you like this video, I mean, 
do the normal YouTube stuff that every YouTuber says. And, um, yeah, I'll see you later.